Hello again. In the last unit we were talking about power series, and so in this lesson we're going to talk about a specific power series called the Maclaurin series. So let's get started. The Maclaurin series is a power series, and what it does is it takes a function that is not a polynomial and it converts it to an infinite polynomial function. All right, so uh, it only exists if the derivative exists for all possible derivatives, the first derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative. Um, it will exist as long as I never run into an error when I take uh, the derivative of that function. So the function itself will be the sum as zero goes to infinity of the kth derivative at zero over k factorial times x to the k. And if you expand that out, it looks like this. It's f of zero plus the first derivative at zero times x plus the second derivative at zero over two factorial times x squared plus the third derivative at zero over three factorial times x to the third and so on. So let's do uh, a couple of examples of this. The first one we're going to do is the cosine of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a polynomial that will approximate the cosine function. So first we'll find some derivatives. Uh, the function itself is cosine, and the first derivative of that will be negative sine x. The next derivative will be negative cosine x. The derivative of that will be sine x. And the fourth derivative will get us back to cosine x. And as you know, the cosine function does cycle through those four functions uh, with its derivatives. So now what we need to do is plug in 0, because remember, we're evaluating all of the derivatives at x equals 0. So the function itself will be worth 1, the first derivative will be worth 0, the second derivative will be worth negative 1, the third derivative will be worth 0 again, and the fourth derivative will be worth 1. All right, so there's my generic expansion of a Maclaurin series. So I'm just going to replace all of those f's and all of those derivatives with the numbers that I found, and this is what I get. And once I write that down, what I can do is I can see if anything can be simplified. And in this case, anything that has a zero in it uh, is going to evaluate to be zero. So I don't need to write those terms. I just need to write the one and the minus x squared over two factorial and the x to the fourth over four factorial and so on. All right, so there's the generic term right there. And that's all of them being summed up. So uh, the cosine function can be approximated um, or can be written as k goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k because we're really only using the even exponents of x and all of that goes over 2k factorial because we're also only using the even factorials. All right, let's do another example. This time we're going to be approximating the uh, natural log of 1 plus x. So first we'll find some derivatives. There's the function. The first derivative of that will be 1 plus x to the negative 1. Take the derivative of that, and you will get negative 1 plus x to the negative 2. Take the derivative of that, and you will get positive 2 factorial times 1 plus x to the negative 3. Then take the derivative of that, and you will get negative 3 factorial times 1 plus x to the negative 4, and so on. So now we plug in 0. Um, into each of those, and we get 0 for the function, we get 1 for the first derivative, negative 1 for the second derivative, 2 factorial for the third derivative, and negative 3 factorial for the fourth derivative. So once I take that general formula for the Maclaurin series, I plug in those numbers everywhere I see an f of x or a derivative, and I get this. f of x is 0 plus 1x, and so on. And then again, I look and see if there's any, uh, anything that can be simplified. And that zero really doesn't need to be written, but everything else I do need to write. And notice how the factorials are canceling out. For example, that two factorial over three factorial just leaves me with a three in the bottom. And the three factorial over four factorial leaves me with just a four in the bottom. So you're trying to simplify each term as much as possible as well, so that you can write this as a nice sum. Um, in this case, k is going from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times x to the k all over just k. And we don't have a factorial this time because remember the factorials on top and bottom simplified out to give a single number. So here's a last example. We're going to find the Maclaurin series for e to the x. So first we're going to find the derivatives. The function is e to the x and the derivative of that is e to the x. And in fact, every derivative is e to the x. So when I plug in 0 into the function and its derivatives, I will always get 1, which makes my job a lot easier. 
So I take the uh, general formula for the Maclaurin series, I replace f and its derivatives with ones, and that's what I get. There's really nothing that can be simplified here, um, so I just write it pretty much the way it was, ignoring the ones in the numerator because multiplying by one just gives you uh, what you had. Uh, and then I can write the generic uh, series or the sum of that series as the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of x to the k over k factorial. All right, so watch what happens when we add more terms to the Maclaurin series. If it goes on to infinity, then it matches the function exactly. But if I stop anywhere along the way, it's only going to approximate that function. So let's look at f of x equals cosine x. There's the cosine function itself. And if I look at just the first term, that's f of x equals one. Well, that doesn't even look remotely similar to the cosine function. But if I add the next term, and look at the graph. Now there's a bit of curviness to the red graph and uh, it looks a little bit more like the cosine function. And as I add more terms and adjust the graph, what you'll notice is uh, the polynomial graph looks more and more like the cosine function, which is not a polynomial. All right. And I think that's as far as I'm going to take it. And if I take it to x to the 16, it looks a lot like the cosine function. Um, and obviously, if I kept going, it would look even more like the cosine function. All right. So what would happen if I took the derivative of the series instead of taking the derivative of cosine? Is that relationship still the same? Well, yes, that relationship is still the same. The series and the graph would look a lot like the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x. So those relationships are still intact. Um, so that is it on Maclaurin series. Uh, if you have any questions on this, please let me know, and I will see you tomorrow.